Hello, good morning. Are you there? Hello, are you there? Hello. Hello, good morning. So we will start our uh, presentation that is plant growth regulators. Already we have seen in the last class, but a part of plant growth regulator is left. We have to see that and also very fast we will brush up the what we have seen in the last presentation so the plant growth regulators are otherwise called as your plant hormones these are the physiological intercellular messengers which controls the complete plant life cycle including the germination Rooting, growth, planting, fruit ripening, foliage, and death. These plant growth hormones are secreted in response to the environmental factors. That is maybe due to the excess of nutrients or in the drought conditions, light, temperature, chemical or physical stress. The levels of hormones will change the lifespan of a plant and are dependent upon the season and environment. So under that, there are five important plant growth regulators. They are the auxins, gibberellins, cytokinins, and abscisic acid, ethylene. These are the five important plant growth hormones. And apart from that, recently there are other plant growth hormones which has been discovered. They are the polyamines, salicylic acid, brassinosteroids, and jasmonates. So these are the things we have to see in detail today. And just we will brush up the yesterday's presentation. The very first plant growth regulator is your auxin. It is the uh, very first plant hormone which has been discovered. The natural auxins are indole 3 acetic acid, indole 3 acetonitrile, phenyl acetic acid, and 4 chloro indole 3 acetic acid. And the synthetic ones are indole 3 butyric acid, alpha naphthyl acetic acid, 2 naphthyl oxy acetic acid, 1 naphthyl acetamide. 5 carboxymethyl NN dimethyl diocarbamate and 2 4 dichlorophenoxyacetic acid. So, we know already about this uh, 2 chlorodiphenoxy acid that is otherwise called as 2 4D, which is used as a selective uh, weed killer, which we have studied uh, when we were dealing about the pest control, which it is a selective weed killer. And when you just come to the functions, it uh, Stimul all always it has the stimulate stimulant actions especially it is induced in the plant tissue culture to stimulate the growth so based on that if you see the actions of the stem elongation apical dominance 
in differentiation of vascular tissue, root initiation on the stem cuttings, lateral root development. And also it produces the triple response and it also has the various effects on leaf and fruit abscissions, fruit setting, development of ripening, flowering, etc. And apart from that, as I already told you, 2,4-D as a selective weed killer. And next, when you see the gibberellins, they are the uh, plant growth hormones derived from ant gibberellin skeleton. And there are about GA1, GA2, GA3. Out of that, GA3, which was considered to be the gibberellic acid. And it was first structurally characterized hormone. And there are about 136 gibberellic acids have been isolated till now from plants, fungi, and bacteria. They belong to diterpenoidal acids. And these gibberellins, they influence stem elongation. They are also stimulative in action. They induce germination. It helps in dormancy, breaking the dormancy. Helps in flowering, sex expression, enzyme inductions, leaf and fruit senescence. And this gibberellins was first uh, uh, studied and isolated by uh, H.E. Kurosawa in the year 1926. It was found in the elongation, market elongation in rice, with, and also apart from the subtropical grasses. And uh, finally, it has been concluded that it has been obtained from the fungus, which is called as becane. It is secreting a chemical it, which stimulates the shoot elongation, inhibits chlorophyll formation and secretes or sub, sorry, suppresses the root growth. The functions, again, it is a stimulative functions, stem elongation, node elongation, inducing flowering in biennial plants. Initially, they develop the rosette flowers and finally they give rise to bolt, that is the rapid expansion of internodes and the formation of flowers. And it breaks seed dormancy, helps in germination, and they induces maleness in dioecious plants. And also they are helpful in producing the parthenophyll fruits. This is the size of the seedless fruits. They delay senescence in the leaves so that the flowering and fruiting can be induced. And next, you can see about these epikinins. They resemble the structure of adenine and they have the similar functions as that of kinetin, which is the synthetic cytokinin. And uh, this cytokinins play their important role in the cell division. That is, they are the compounds, they promote cytokinesis. That is nothing but the cell division. And the naturally occurring cytokinin is your zeatin, which is obtained from the corn. And this cytokinin is present in all the higher plants of mosses, fungi, bacteria. And also it is present in prokaryotes and eukaryotes. There are about 200 natural and synthetic uh, cytokinins identified till now. And this cytokinin concentrations are more in the growing tissues, that is otherwise called as meristematic tissues, like the roots, young leaves, developing fruits, stems, seeds, etc. And the natural cytokinins are zeatin, N6-dimethylaminopurin, isopentanylaminopurin. The synthetic ones are kinetin, adenine, 6-benzyladenine, benzimidazole, and NN-diphenyl. Urea. And functions, if you see, it induces uh, cytokinesis, that is nothing but the cell division, induce morphogenesis, that is formation of organs, that is the shoot initiation and bud formation in the tissue culture. And it stimulates the growth of the lateral buds, which release the epical dominance. It stimulates leaf expansion, cell enlargement, and enhance the stomatal opening. So that's why it induces the growth. It promotes the conversion of etioplast into chloroplast and thereby stimulates the chlorophyll synthesis. So there, uh, this leads to the uh, prevention of aging in the leaves. 
and uh, it stimulates the dark germination of light dependent seeds and also it delays senescence that is already i told you and it promotes some stages of root development that is about your cytic kinins and next is the abscisic acid it is a naturally growth inhibiting substance present in the plant it is having its normal physiological process which are called as abscisin they play a major role in abscission of fruits they are otherwise called as dormin because they induce bud dormancy and usually they play inhibitory roles and sometimes it has the promoting functions also the various functions of aspartic acid are it stimulates the closure of stomata thereby it induces the stress or uh, stress for water longevity and also they increase in the synthesis of abscisic acid they involve in the abscission of buds leaves petals flowers and fruits and also they involve in dehiscence of fruits and also bud dormancy is induced by abscisic acid it prolongs the seed dormancy and delays the germination it inhibits uh, elongation lateral root developments geotropism and this abscisic acid which comes from the plastids promotes the metabolism of ripening and promotes senescence and sometimes uh, uh, it reverses the effects of growth stimulating hormones like your auxins gibralins etc and the last one is the that is the five five major or primary uh, growth hormone present in the plant is the ethylin this ethylin is used from the ancient times by the people to ripen the fruits to stimulate the ripening of fruits by using the fig and uh, this ethylene how they have been uh, produced when you see by burning the incense in the closed rooms where the fruits are kept for ripening and this ethylene is also found in the germinating seeds the ethylene which has the fruit ripening effect was demonstrated or it is it was discovered by sievers and true in the year 1912 when they were burning the kerals in stove next to that uh, lemon was kept and when they were burning the kerals in stove there was a color change in the lemon from green to yellow that is the ripening has been taken place and further it was confirmed by denny in the year 1923 and uh, this ethylene minimizes sorry it is having the inhibitory actions always and it helps in ripening of the fruits and sometimes it is helping the promotory promoting actions also the production of ethylene stimulates the fruit ripening flooding stress senescence mechanical damage and causes infections it is a regulator of cell death programs in the plants it stimulates sometimes the release of dormancy that means the dormancy of the plants can be brought about by ethylene it is again an inhibitory action it stimulates shoot and root growth and differentiation in some of the cases otherwise always it has the inhibitory actions and they also have some role in forming the adventitious roots it stimulates leaf and root abscission that means falling of the leaves and fruit and flowering is also inhibited and sometimes the ripening is in uh, stimulated in the fruits of mangoes pineapples etc it induces femaleness in dioecious flowers it stimulates flower opening and it also stimulates flower and leaf senescence so that is about the ethylene 
these are the five important uh, plant growth regulators what have been uh, studied from longer time and now we will see the uh, plant growth regulators which has been discovered in the later st stages and what kind of effects they are having during the cultivation and how it affects and what are the examples of this later developed plant growth hormones. So under that first we will see about the polyamines. These are unique in nature and they are effective in higher concentrations. You can see the concentration from 5 to 500 milligram per liter and they influence flowering and pro promote plant regeneration. The examples of polyamines are spermin, spermidin and putrescin. They have their major role in basic genetic process as DNA synthesis and gene expressions. They are responsible for cell migration, proliferation and differentiation in plants. They also represent a group of uh, plant growth hormones and they also have effect on the skin, hair growth, female fertility, fat depots, pancreatic integrity, regenerative growth in mammals too. So that is about your polyamines. The next class of the later discovered plant hormone is brassinosteroids. These brassinosteroids are the new class of plant growth substances. So they are widely distributed within the plant kingdom. They are effective at low concentration, not like the polyamines. So they are used in both bioassays and as well as in the whole plants. They have the wide range of effects which are different from other classes of plant substances. And uh, this brassinotriads can be applied to one part of the plant and they can transport it from one part to the another location in the plant wherever they can exert the actions. They elicit the biological response in the very low concentrations. That means they exhibit their actions at low concentration. And when you just see the functions of brassinosteroids, they promote shoot elongation at low concentrations. They strongly inhibit the root growth and development. They promote ethylene biosynthesis and epinastic. They interfere with AKD steroids, that is molting hormones in the insects. They had uh, contradictory effects in the tissue culture. 24 epi brassinolites has been shown to mimic the culture conditioning and they proved to have the synergistic effect with these factors in promoting the carrot cell growth by tissue culture. And this brassinosteroids in the transformed tobacco cells in low concentration, they inhibit the cell growth. So when you see this uh, brassinosteroids are also having the inhibitory actions. And sometimes the stimulative effect which enhance the xylem differentiation and decrease the fruit abortion and the dropping. It enhances the resistance to chilling, disease, herbicides and salt stress. And they promote germination. And also they promote changes in plasma lemma energization which improves the transport and assimilation uptake that means the plant metabolism 
it also increases the activities of the enzymes like RNA and DNA polymerases and helps in the synthesis of RNA, DNA and proteins in the plant cells. So that is about the brassinosteroids. And next comes the salicylic acid. So you know very well about the salicylic acid. And in the later part, this has been recognized as a potential plant growth regulator. This is synthesized from the amino acid phenylalanine. It is a new uh, class of the plant growth regulator. It is a chemically characterized compound, which is almost all present in almost all the plant kingdom. And uh, it has uh, many effects on the physiological functions of the plants at low concentrations. The molecular studies on salicylic acid signal transduction yields to study about the mechanism of action and its important regulatory as a important regulatory compound. What are the functions of salicylic acid? It promotes the flowering. It stimulates the thermogenesis in the arum flowers. And also it stimulates the plant pathogenesis protein production. That means it helps in the producing the self-immune power. That is systemic acquired resistance against the infections can be produced within the plant when a foreign organism enters into the plant. It enhances the longevity of the flowers. It may inhibit the ethylene biosynthesis. And also it inhibits the seed germination. It blocks the wound response. And also it reverses the effects of abscisic acid. These are all the various functions of your salicylic acid. And the last class of your uh, plant growth regulator, which is discovered in the later stages, or jasmonates. What are these jasmonates? They are represent represented by the jasmonic acid and its methyl ester. These jasmonates, they are isolated from jasmine plants. The methyl ester of jasmonic acid is an important product in the perfume industry. This jasmonic acid is synthesized from linolenic acid and it is a new class of plant growth regulator. So it is a chemically characterized compound and it is identified in many plant species apart from jasmine. And it has uh, many physiological effects at the very low concentrations. And it has an indirect evidence that it suggested that the, it is transported throughout the plant. Even though if it is synthesized in one particular part of the plant, it uh, gets transported to all parts of the plant. And what are the functions of this jasmonates? They inhibit many of the processes in the plants like seedling longitudinal growth. That means the seedlings, whatever they're producing, it will be of short length. And root length growth, mycorrhizal fungi growth, all are the inhibitory actions. It has inhibitory action on tissue culture growth, on embryogenesis, on seed germination, pollen germination, flower bud formation, and also in carotenoid biosynthesis, chlorophyll formation, rubisco biosynthesis, and photosynthetic activities. And some Stimulative actions also it has, it stimulates the senescence that is in turn again an inhibitory action that is an unwanted production. The senescence leads to the falling of fruits and leaves from the plant. And also it promotes abscission. 
it promotes tuber formation. Maybe that is an advantageous effect. And fruit ripening, pigment formation and tendril coiling. Again, these are all the inhibitory effects. And it also has its effect in differentiation in plant tissues culture. And it helps in advantageous root formation, breaking of the seed dormancy, pollen germination, stomatal closure, microtubule disruption, chlorophyll degradation, that is it helps in chlorophyll degradation. So that means the chlorophyll will be removed from the plants and the leaves become discolored and finally leading to falling of the leaves. And it also has its effects in the respiration, ethylene biosynthesis and protein synthesis. So uh, these are all some of the functions and apart from that they have a role in plant defense by inducing proteinase synthesis. Okay, so these are all the various uh, functions of this jasmonids. So when you see the later developed hormones like your polyamines, salicylic acid, brassinosteroids and jasmonids, they also have some of the effects on the various stages of the plant growth and in the plant tissue culture. Okay, so uh, that is about the plant growth regulators. Any doubts? Yes? No, ma'am. Okay, shall we stop the class? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Yes, ma'am.